This last Christmas I had the chance to watch the first of the Lord of the Rings films again and um, as I was preparing for this I was reminded of a clip from that. Uh, it's the clip where Frodo has discovered how powerful the ring is that he possesses and actually how dangerous it is to hold onto the ring and he attempts, he tries to offer the ring to Gandalf and as he does it Gandalf refuses. He says take it Gandalf, take it and eventually Gandalf says don't tempt me and he explains to Frodo that he would take the ring out of a desire to do good but that actually the ring would master him, it would take him over and would do evil through him and I think that's a helpful illustration for us of what temptation is. You see it's something that we desire, we want it and yet it's something that's bad for us, bad for our world. Remember at the beginning of the Bible, there's the story about Eve and the snake. And that's the first temptation, isn't it, in, in the Bible? And we see that Eve is tempted to eat the forbidden fruit. And there's something about temptation, uh, especially when something is forbidden. We want to do it, don't we? We desire it. And temptation could be something good. It could be something like food, which is good in and of itself. But if we eat too much of it, it's bad for us. Or it could be sex, which is good, a good thing that God has given us. But when we do it outside the covenant of marriage, it's bad for us. But of course, it could also be something that's bad. Perhaps the desire to spread the dirt on someone or to draw attention to how great you are in front of people or to be dishonest or to lash out. We're tempted to do things like that, aren't we? Perhaps it might be tempted, uh, temptation to deny our friends, to betray our friends. We remember in the Bible the story about Peter and how he denies the Lord Jesus despite being the very closest friend. He denies him, he's tempted, he, he's afraid and he won't admit to knowing Jesus. So one of the things when we're looking at temptation is that we need to know what is good for us and what is bad for us, what is right and what is wrong. And if we don't know it's wrong, or we don't care that it's wrong, well, it's not really temptation, it's just being ignorant or irresponsible. And it's why this prayer is for Christian people who see Jesus as the guide for their life. You see, we're, we get tempted to do things which are actually bad for us. And so when we pray this part of the prayer, we're praying to God not to lead us there, not to bring us or carry us into that place where we are tempted, but to deliver or save or rescue us from evil. But what's this line about then? Well, it's about realising our bent towards doing wrong. We really want to do the thing that we're not meant to do. It's no good pre pretending that we aren't tempted to do these things. I want what I should not have. I want what's bad for me. And it's also about realising that we can't resist on our own. Lead me, Lord, not into temptation, but deliver me, save me from evil. There's many times in my life when I can look back and see that actually what I wanted to do was give in to temptation. I wanted to do the wrong thing. I wanted to do the thing that God had forbidden. But God, in his grace, had mercy on me and frustrated my plans. So it's about acknowledging that. It's also about depending on God to get us through. Because the good news is that God in Jesus was able to resist every temptation. He's able to sympathise with us because he was tempted in every way and yet was it without sin. That's what the letter to the Hebrews tells us. He knows how hard it is to resist temptation. Remember, he was tempted for 40 days. He fasted for 40 days and then was tempted by the devil to turn stones into food. How strong must the temptation have been? Or he was tempted to glorify himself. Or again, the devil tempted him to have power over the whole world and to get the power in a way that would require no sacrifice. But Jesus was the only one who completely resisted temptation. How intense that temptation must have been as he came to the final days in his life. How tempting it must have been 
for him to say, I'm not going to go to the cross. I don't want to do that. I'm going to set my face away from Jerusalem. We remember seeing him, don't we? Uh, thinking about that story in Gethsemane, where he asks, where he prays to God to take the cup from him. Yet not my will, but yours be done, he says. He was tempted just like us, and yet he resisted. And finally, why should we pray this last section of the Lord's Prayer? Well, ultimately, because as we've been talking about, giving in to temptation is bad for us. It's not good for us. And so praying this prayer asks God to help us keep on the straight and narrow in the future, to do things that are good for us and good for other people. But there's also another problem with giving in to temptation. The problem is, is that what happens is that it causes, when we give in to temptation, it causes a break in our relationship with God. It's a bit like some, if somebody gives in to their sexual desire, their desire for sexual fulfillment with someone not their husband or their wife, that causes a break in their relationship. Whether they tell them or not, their relationship is effective and, and afterwards they may desperately regret it because it's not good for them or for anyone else. And Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones commenting on the last part of the prayer, uh, of the Lord's Prayer, says this. He says, Jesus teaches us, um, having prayed for our physical needs and then having prayed, for, prayed about the need of our forgiveness so that we can be restored to knowing God, he then teaches us to pray uh, that, we, that nothing get in the way of our relationship between, God, between us and God, of the relationship between us and God. And he says this, I need to continue to enjoy that fellowship, the fellowship between us and God, without interruption, without anything ever coming between me and the face of God, who has become my Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praying and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's ultimately about that. It's about keeping our relationship with God, keeping on seeing God, meeting with God, not letting anything get in the way of God. So we pray when we pray, Lord, don't let anything get in the way of my relationship with you. Don't let, don't let me do anything. Don't let me to be tempted to do anything. That means that I can't see your face as clearly that I can't have fellowship with you, that I can't be reminded of your presence with me. That's ultimately what the last bit, the last bit of the prayer is about. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil so that we can truly know God.